through the long dark night out on the open seas by faith alone sights unknown and yet his eyes Watching me, the anchor holds, though the ships be battered. The anchor holds, though the sails they are torn.
Well, I'm thankful I can stand here before you tonight saying everything's all right. Have you ever stood in the church house knowing everything's not all right? It's a miserable feeling. To know when you come to that place in conviction that you're so scared that if you died before you made a move that you'd lift your eyes in a literal burning hell. How scary of a feeling for conviction to be on you. But how sweet that it is to know that everything's all right. Amen. I'm thankful tonight everything's all right. Is everything all right? If it ain't all right, it can't. It might. It better be. Amen. Get it fixed up if it ain't. If you're not right with the Lord, get right. Time's running out. Are you glad to be in the Lord's house? What an honor it is. Jeremiah chapter number 2. The book of Jeremiah chapter number 2. Amen. Good to see you here. What a wonderful crowd for a Wednesday night. Amen. I'm So I was standing there as, as we were standing around the altar. And uh, I'm just going to brag on y'all. There's a lot of churches tonight that has a whole lot more than we do on Sunday morning. And I'm not jealous of that. I'd like to see our church pews full. But they ain't got no lights on tonight. They got the lights turned out. They ain't enough comes on Wednesday night to pay the light bill. So they just decided to stay home. But my desire is not to stay home. Amen. My desire is to be in the house of the Lord. David said, I was glad. When they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Amen. COVID, uh, it, it put a lot of church people out, and they're still out. But the real Christians of God, it made us suck up a little closer because we realize how close we're getting. Amen. So, so much more as you see the day approaching. Amen. We need to bind together, get together, get ready. Amen. Let's get out of here together. Amen. Jesus is coming. Are you ready? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray for me tonight that the Lord would help me. Brother David taught our Sunday school class a few weeks ago and read this scripture. Can't get it off my mind. So the Lord help me tonight. Going to try to uh, just try to encourage us and help us and, and help me, the Lord willing. Verse number 32 of Jeremiah chapter 2. I pray we can rejoice in the sanctuary tonight. Amen. What an honor it is to be a Christian. I thought his brother Johnny was quoting the word to us. We're so blessed to even be a part of this family. We're so blessed that somebody would think enough of us to look upon us, much less die for us. And to think... That he died for us while we was yet unlovable. While we thought nothing of him, he loved us enough to die for us. He left that for this so we could leave this for that. And I'm thankful that he, he did what he did for us. Pray for me tonight and help me if you would. Verse number 32, a question is asked. Can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. That's all that I want to read tonight. Amen. Can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. I've been thinking today and just meditating on these scriptures. And Brother David done a whole lot better job teaching than I can preaching. But I'm just going to give you what the Lord has placed upon my heart. And uh, what, a, what, a, what a sad time that we've lived in to think that God has done what He has done. And America has done what we have done. Amen. The, no longer than America has been birthed, how far we've drifted from where we started. Amen. But I'm telling you, the Bible said they must come. A great falling away, or the end cannot come. But I'm going to say tonight, amen, we've got so accustomed to everything we see going on, amen, till we've almost got used to it, and it don't look as filthy as it used to look. Some of the old timers, if they could come back tonight,
and stand in the pulpit, watch the news, read the newspaper, or take one ride to Asheville. Amen. They would wonder what in the world has happened to America. Amen. A lot of men, women, boys, and girls have fought on the battlefield for us to have uh, the freedom that we have. And now we have them, amen, pulling the flag down off the pole, uh, stomping it, setting it on fire. They really don't know the price that freedom Amen. There's a whole lot of young people now don't know what it is, amen, to fight for anything. Amen. But I'm thankful for the men, the women that went to the foreign soil and fought. Amen. Some of them never come back home. Some of them, all the family got back was dog tags. Amen. But thank you, Brother Tom. Some of you in here tonight, amen, that may have fought on the battlefield some of the endless nights of the warfare you have in your mind that you never share with anybody. It was all done so we can stand here tonight. Amen. In the United States of America, I want to say thank you for fighting. Amen. For our freedom. Hey, I said thank you for fighting uh, for our freedom. Amen. Hey, we have, a, we have a day that we call Memorial Day. Veterans Day. It's set aside. They put flags down there in Canton res- uh, erecting a man's name or a woman's name. Somebody that gave their life on the foreign soil. Amen. A little old white cross with a name and an American flag flying in the breeze. I say thank you America. Uh, that we still recognize the ones that gave their life. Amen. Let us not forget uh, the price that was paid for our freedom. Amen. I feel the Lord tonight. Amen. But how sad that it is. Amen. That a man did what Jesus did. I come all the way from heaven's glory. Amen. So you and I uh, could have a way. Amen. It's not only the United States of America. John looked down the sea coast and said, Behold, uh, the Lamb of God that taketh away of the sins of the whole world. Amen. It's not only for the man that can speak English. It's for whosoever will. He said, let him come. Amen. The man that's living. Amen. In a, in a house made of pallets with a tarp over it tonight. Amen. Jesus loved that man. No greater love, as Johnny said, uh, that a man would have than he lay down his life uh, for his friend. Jesus uh, stood in the gap between heaven and the earth. Amen. Amen. He was the linking point uh, between sinful man and God. Amen. He got a hold of the hand of God and reached down in that pit of sin and got a hold of your hand together. Amen. I'm so glad if Jesus hadn't have done what he did. Look where we would be. But it's sad to me that we as a church and we as Americans have forgotten him days without number. Amen. Help us, God. Help us, God. I'll tell you what I wanted to do tonight. She couldn't come, and she just borrowed a wedding dress. But I wanted my wife to put her wedding dress back on. And I wanted Ethan to play the wedding march and her to walk down the aisle again. Can a bride... Forget her attire. No. I can remember standing up on that place y'all call Pretty Place. When you go across the top of the mountain right there of a morning when I go to work in Hendersonville, I look back towards Rosman. And the tallest radio tower known to man standing back there on top of that mountain. I never see that radio tower that I don't think of that bride. Because you go right past it to go up there where they got married. They asked me to marry them. And I stood there. And she walked down them steps coming down through there. Brandon was standing there in awe. They dated for I don't know how long. But everything led up to this one day. The wedding day. Hallelujah. My wife worked as a young girl. Amen. Her and her mother got ready for that day when I once I asked her. I never have been the romantic kind. Some people get out on one knee, haul them to the top of Amen Mount Zion, get out on one knee, wait till the sun's setting, wait till the lightning's flashing, wait till the moon comes up at that perfect time and say, Would you marry me? I pulled over in the side of the road. Amen. Never even got out of the truck. I reached in my pocket. I asked my wife, Will you marry me? She said, Yeah. We went on up the road. Amen. From that day, Brother Homer. 
as she started working towards that day. Amen. The, the wedding day. But uh, you know what? Amen. The biggest highlight of a wedding day is. Amen. Boys, it ain't you, by the way. Amen. The lady, it, it, she just got that set aside and to look the prettiest she's ever looked in her life on that one day. Amen. Do you think she's going to leave her attire uh, hanging in the closet, uh, get down to the church house and say, oops, I forgot my dress. Oh, no. That's all that matters. Amen. Because the purity of the beauty of walking down the aisle. Amen. Do you remember? Come on now. Do you remember? Amen. But Jesus died on the cross. Amen. For whosoever will, let him come. Amen. But all oh, that day over yonder in Crusoe, North Carolina, was my wedding day. I said it was my wedding day. I heard what you said, Homer. Over yonder on that old concrete carport. When you pass down, your grandbaby will point over there and say, over there where the Lord Jesus saved you. I heard what Brandon said. That old place down there in Marion, North Carolina. Amen. On that praise, on that day, all of heaven stood by and said, hang on a minute. There's fixing to be a wedding day. Hallelujah. When I got up off of that altar, I had on a brand new garment. I said I had on a brand new garment. Amen. All the change that was made in my life. Oh, what a day when Jesus moved in my life. Amen. Amen. What a day. What a day. Me and my wife liked one day dating a year. And I can remember standing in that in that church down there at Full Gospel on my wedding day. Standing up there in front. And Rhonda, man, Joyce's niece, one of them big old things you signed the book with that had a long feather on it. They shut the doors when everybody got in the sanctuary. She said, when you see that feather, do this. Over between the cracks of that door, you go ahead. Starts playing. Dun, dun, dun. That's what I'm going to get him to play for altar call in a minute. Here comes the bride. When them doors open, I've known her for a year. She's never looked so beautiful. I never heard a story. Got a picture of her coming around through the by, by the bottom of the church, holding the skirt of that white dress up because it's raining. We don't want it to get dirty. Because I'm fixing to go down the aisle. This is whew, the prettiest I've ever looked. Did I forget anything? Oops, forgot my dress. Oh no. No. I wasn't there when some of y'all got married. But I promise you, bride, you look the best you could look, and you never forgot your attire. How is it? Can a maid forget her ornaments? What is her ornaments? I was talking to my wife today. and She said a maid's ornaments are the tools that makes her job easier when you walk in to clean someone's house do you forget your vacuum cleaner do you forget your broom without your ornaments you're useless but with the ornaments it makes her job so easy we seem to forget all the things that Jesus has done in your life to make your life so much more easy. The times that you was working for the devil. Amen. And $500 wouldn't go nowhere because you're feeding that on the inside. But now you say, I'm saved and born again. Look at what he's made easy in your life. Look at the time you didn't have it, but he gave it to you. Amen. Oh, I made, we'll forget her ornaments. Let's not forget the God that made our life.
life different. Let's don't forget the day that he saved us. Amen. I know sometimes, amen, things get rough, but every once in a while, we need to get our memory book of our wedding out and say, thank you, Jesus. That was the best day of my life when you turned my life around. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now me and my wife's together. You're no more twain, but you're one flesh. Me and Jesus, if we're in perfect harmony, if we're in perfect harmony, if your family, if your husband and wife, if you ain't in harmony, it's a wreck at your house. Have you ever had it where it wasn't in harmony? Sure we have. Don't act like you're so holy. Man, there ain't nothing works. One's this way, one's that way. One's happy, one's mad. And the one that's mad realizes the more I pout, the more they pet me. Amen, Walls. My wife's looking at me right now sitting in the recliner with Jeremiah just dying laughing. But when you get in unity, you're in this together. We're a body. Come on, talk to me. I know it's funny. We'll life after church too. Amen. The toe don't hurt, except the whole body hurts. We're in this together, Randy. Amen. Jesus has got it all. But if you're down, he's going to sit there with you. You get back up. Hallelujah. Amen. We ain't always going to be on the upside and the bright side, but Jesus walks the dark hills. Jesus walks the dark hills. Job said, many are the dark days, but he said, when he's tried me, I'll come forth like gold. Job knew God. He said, I know one thing, my Redeemer liveth. He knew he was in contact with the Savior. I know we're going to have hard days, but I'm glad I'm married to Jesus. I'm glad he's on my side. Let's don't forget him. Look at everything he's done for us. Let's don't forget God because God sure ain't forgot us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. If I cleaned houses for a living, some of you do. And I started down the road to go to my first job and I looked in my rearview mirror and my vacuum cleaner was gone. And my little pail that's got all my stuff in it that I cleaned with was gone. I'd either go back to the house and get it, or I'd go buy me some more, or I'd quit cleaning the houses. Amen. You can clean a house. My mama used to do it like this. Get a, well, I started talking in that. She'd get a thing of wax and a rag, and she'd get down on her knees, and she'd do like this. She'd wax the entire house on her knees. And then she had an old wool coat. My sister would sit on it. My brother would pull her around to shine it. But now we got easy things. I wonder how many of you would get on your knees with a thing of wax and a rag and go all over your house We've got it a whole lot easier. Come on, talk to me. God has made it a whole lot easier on. He said with food and raiment, be there with content. Hands down. You got clothes on your back? I ain't got but one pair. Well, he didn't say you needed two. Just be, just be happy. You got something to eat? Every one of us do. I can tell by looking at you. Be content. Talk to me. Be content. How many of you has got more than one vehicle? Wow. Well, he's made it easy on us. I heard what Hanley Milby said. He said we'd go to church, and he said it was one fence stake in that last curve before we rounded the curve to where the church was at. And he said my mama would stop at that fence stake, sissy. She would take her pair of boots or shoes off, put it beside that fence stake. She'd get in her pocketbook and get her church shoes and put them back on. And go in the house of the Lord with glory in her voice. That's the only two pairs of shoes she had. <laughs> oh, yeah. My daddy said we had two pair of breeches. One we wear to church. 
one we wear the rest of the time. And my granny would go to the creek with a washboard and scrub all day long just so our kids, our kids would be presentable. God's made it easy on us. Come on. God's made it easy on us, Taylor. Hey, man, we've got cars to drive. we got a good warm house to live in. You just push a button and get whatever temperature you want. Hey, man, you don't have to saw no wood if you don't want to. You ain't got to go out to the spring and dip no water. God's made it easy on us. God's give us a good job. God give us a good house to worship in. God's give us a house over our head, a flip switch on the wall where you just turn it up and the lights come on. God's been good to us. I said God's been good. Does. I told my daddy I'd like to see the good old days. He said, no, you wouldn't. This is the good old days. Amen. God's been good to us. I'm thankful I ain't got to walk back home. God's been good to us. Let's don't forget where them blessings come from. Amen. Amen. Most of us pout because we ain't got what you got. You'll get a whole lot more in life the very second that you'll be content with what you have. What will I get? A whole lot of ease in your mind. It's not about getting what you got. It's about the relationship with the Savior. Amen. There's a whole lot of people got a nice ring, no relationship. We need a relationship. We can buy the suits, the best singers, pay a singing leader, choir leader. We can pay somebody to play music. And I think our teachers and musicians are as good as anybody that goes through the internet and finds them that's been to school. Because you know what? Brother Ethan called me. I'm just going to pin some roses on him. Brother Johnny, he won't even take no preaching appointments if it's his Sunday to teach. Thank you, preacher. Ethan called me. Jason asked him to stay up there and preach. He called me and said, I'm so torn. He said, I know God called me to do both of them. And sometimes I don't know which one to do. I said, you go on and preach, son. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for doing it from your heart. Hallelujah. These churches, when the musician gets done, they get up and go get, get in their car and go to the house. And the preacher ain't even preached yet. I'm not here to try to impress you. Amen. Don't you try to impress me because you probably won't get it done. I'm here because I love the Savior I'm here because of what he's done thank God he's all together lovely and the closer you get to him the more beautiful he becomes to you first time I saw my wife I fell in love with her beauty I hadn't known nothing about her but I've been with her 26 years she still likes not a, I got them boys to, now they look at her and say, Mama, you look stunning. I've taught them to do that. Because she's beautiful. You need to teach your boys to do that. Do they? Their mama's beautiful. I've seen my daddy love on my mama more the last year of their marriage than he ever did. She would never be on the front page of Vogue magazine. But the beauty is the closeness and the knitness of their heart. Amen. How close are you to Jesus? They won me over by preaching to me about hell. And telling me the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I was scared to death I was going to die and go to hell. But since I met him, Joe, I found out he's a whole lot more than I ever dreamed of. Whoa, he said, I found out, Brother Homer. He said, I'll stick closer than a brother. I found out that he'll give you stuff that the enemy took away from you. I found out, hey, I'm not, I'm not with him to get all that stuff. I'm with him because I love him. Amen, but because he loves me, he gives me things the world can't give me. He said, peace I leave with you. Not as the world giveth. Amen, peace I leave with you. Hey, have you got peace in your heart tonight? It's because Jesus gave it to you. Don't forget forget what he's done for you. Amen. Amen. If, you can't, if you can't run off and leave your wedding dress, by all means, don't forget Jesus. Every once in a while, do you ever get to, you pitch your book out of y'all's wedding and look at it. 
you, Joe? Probably get depressed, wouldn't you? I had, I had hair when I got married. Tim's looking at me like I don't believe you've ever had hair. I do. Things has changed, but the love ain't. Brother Johnny, been married 50 years, going on 51. Is that right? 52. Wow, time does fly, don't it? The love. Some of the storms that y'all have been through since you said I do. If you knew all that would happen before you said I do, you probably never said I do. But you see, the good thing about Jesus, Sister Amy, is the second you accept him and say, I do. I'll go with you, Dale. Do you take me as your Savior? I will. But the thing about him is, he knows every storm you're ever going to face. But he still says, I'll go. When he left the portals of glory, he knew every curse word you'd say. But he said, I'll still go. Amen. Brother Joe, I heard you say you weren't looking for God. You've told about your past. Kimmy Donna, I've heard about your past. You've told about your past. But he decided, I'll go anyway. I'll go anyway. You ought to bless him tonight because he came anyway. Amen. Ain't, ain't none of us worth coming for. Some of us a lot worse than others. Amen. I heard what David said. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. What is he trying to say? It would be a good time to renew our vows. It's not, it's not my wedding day. That made us what we are. I'm talking about me and Melanie. That was the day that we was united as one. But we are where we are today because we have fought for our relationship. And we decided we're going to go through this thing and I'm here for you, you're here for me. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. Thank God. I'm glad Jesus saved me. But that ain't all they are to it. You got to get up off the altar and start walking in a different direction. Yeah. Amen. Nobody said you wouldn't slip up. Nobody said you wouldn't stumble. But get back up. I said get back up and let's go on. Go on. Go on. Forgetting the things that are behind us. And let's go on. And we're almost home, church. Amen. We're about to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. So let's hold on to him by faith until we can see him face to face. Church, have we forgot? Have we forgot our covenant that we made? For better or for worse, richer or for poor, sickness and in health, I do. But how many relationships when it ain't all good? Out the window. I feel like I'm dying. I'm leaving. I didn't sign up for this. Yeah, you did. Hey. Hey, some of you been through broken relationships. That's under the blood. Thank God it's under the blood. But God didn't set it up that way. Moses gave them a bill of divorcement because they wouldn't hush. The hardness of their heart. Jesus, when he saved you, Josh, he meant every inkling, I'm going to go with you all the way home. If there's any divorce in this relationship, it'll be on your part. He won't never walk away from you. But how many of us have walked away from him? And we forgot. We've left the ornaments of our servitude. Because we want him to do everything. Some of those places you go, you don't have to take your stuff. You use theirs. Their vacuum cleaner. I'm just picking on y'all because that's what's in my mind. Their vacuum cleaner. Their mop. Their cleaner. Their this. Their that. Their that. If you ain't real careful, you'll get used to that. Come on. 
pretty soon we'll say, God, I want you to furnish everything. I'm just here. I'm here now. Get, get Ethan to play a couple and let, we'll let him sing one. And, and I'm going to see if he can say anything to at least, at least ugh, get my hand up. God, I want you to furnish everything as the deadest service I've ever been in. That mama said, son, I told you I'd use it. Where'd you get that sucker? I bought it with the dollar you gave me. That was supposed to be for Sunday school. You weren't supposed to buy a sucker. Well, I shook a preacher's hand as I went in. He let me in for free. The little boy standing between the mom and daddy on the way home for lunch. And he heard the mom say, it's the coldest preaching I've ever heard. And the dad said, did you hear that one in the choir? Couldn't carry a tune in the bucket. And that little boy leaned up and said, I thought it was a pretty good show for a dollar. When the plate come by, it's all I seen you put in, Dad. That's all it cost us was a dollar. I thought it was pretty good. God, I want you to furnish everything. And God every once in a while says, I want you to come in the back with thanksgiving. Because I've already given you more than you deserve. You ought to come in the back of the house with your hands up. Ain't nobody has to come down here and build a fire. It comes in, every, all the temperatures just right. If you're cold, mash the button. If you're hot, mash the button. Amen. Where's our praise at? Where's our glory at? We forgot about, amen, who we're married to. It ain't about what you wear. It's about who you serve. And if we get it right in our heart, God, amen, will be the first on the list. Let's don't forget who we're married to. Amen. Amen. Your wife cooks your supper, but she's not your maid. She's your helpmeet. Sometimes we expect somebody to do what we call a job. And it's not a job if you're happily married. It's a privilege. Amen. Teaching ain't a job if you're called. I don't get up here. Because I feel like this is where that y'all have hired me to be. I promise you I'd do something besides pastor if I was hired. I dig ditches and pour concrete. Come on. That's what I do and I like it. I like doing what I do but I do it because I'm called. I'm called. And this is where God has put me. I'd preach different messages if, y'all, if I thought y'all was paying me to preach what you wanted to hear. Thank you for taking care of me. But I'm going to preach to you what he tells me to preach to you. Amen. I love you, but I'm not married to you. I'm married to him. And if I please him, it's an honor to be in this relationship. While we all stand to our feet, Ethan's going to play the wedding march. Can you play that? Sure he can. He can play anything. Tonight, you might say, I'll be honest, man, I'm faithful. I'm faithful to church. But I feel like I've just got stale. I'm kind of, I'm really, I'll just be honest, I've, I've forgotten. Every once in a while, you need to get in your vehicle and drive to wherever it was you got saved. Every once in a while, you and your wife you need to go out on a date and don't ex- discuss nothing, but I'm glad you're my wife. And I'm not saying this to be mushy, but I'm just, telling you if you'll do some things men it'll make it a whole lot easier in your relationship it don't take it don't take one bit of money to put your arm around your wife and say thank you for taking so good care of my family well she don't take good care of me well if we get our attitudes right she might amen Sometimes you feel like you've got to pay somebody to make a biscuit. I feel like I'm talking to somebody. I can't make good biscuits. No, but if you've got a good relationship, you'll try. And that fella that you made them for, they may not be perfect, but you won't say a word. Johnny's dad, and I know I'm rambling on, but I'm enjoying it, thank you. Johnny's dad was one of the most I don't know how to explain him. One of the most easygoing people I've ever seen. Complimented everything. Kendra and Kayla stayed with them one day. Me and Melanie was doing something. Working, I guess. I don't know. 
they stayed with them down there. So they decided they'd cook for them. How old was y'all? Ten years old. So they made fried chicken and toast. Is that right? Put it on the table, and here come Papa and Nanny. And of course, the women wants to critique the cooking to make them a better cook. Needs a little bit more salt, Nanny would say. But Papa sitting over there, this is what he say. I love my bread burnt. This chicken is so good and burnt. Huh? Oh, it was raw and the bread was burnt. But because he wanted to compliment his grandbabies, it was just right. You don't always do everything right, but God don't always. He, he said, oh, you have little faith. Why'd you doubt? But immediately he put him right back in the boat. So as a relationship with Jesus, he's been awful good to us, church. So he said, let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ. So that means let it flow into your family. And if we can have, I didn't figure this would go this direction, but while I'm here, I might as well just beat on it. If we'll let this funnel in our relationships, we'll have a whole lot more spirit-filled services. Because if we don't have no unity in the home, we have no power in the church. you got to have trust at home. If you can't trust them before you marry them, for God's sake, don't marry them. If you can't let their, their past go before you marry them, don't marry them. Don't drag up stuff that you said for better or for worse for. Let it go. If God, no wonder God said, I'm going to forget all this. If he drug up all your past, man, you wouldn't have no time for nothing. But he says, I forgive you. I forgive you. Boy, ain't that a good bridegroom. I forgive you of all that stuff you ever, let's start all over. We got a new life together. I said, we got a new life together. I've been saved since I was seven years old. I'm 48, almost 49 years old. He ain't never done me nothing but good, buddy. I said, nothing but good. And I want to be faithful to him. And don't forget what he's done for me. Restore unto me. I'm going to quit talking. And I'm going to open the altars and let him play the wedding march. Maybe you can say, I'll be honest. Take me back to my wedding day, Jesus, and restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Anybody need to pray? Does anybody need to pray? I'm not talking about your wedding day with a white gown, ring barriers, rose petals. I'm talking about the day you got saved. Don't forget how easy he's made it on you. Don't forget the life he's given you together. Look what he's furnished for you. Look at the freedom you've got. Maybe it'll do us good just to get in the altar and say, I just want to say thank you. It won't hurt you to praise Him a little bit. Say thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. Lord, I appreciate you. I love you, Jesus. You crossed every T and dotted every I in the law so we could have grace. Help us not to forget the cost of freedom that you paid for us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm so thankful when you took me as your child. You took all the blunders, mistakes. You knew every mistake I would make, but you still said I do. I love you, Lord. Would you please bless our church and our church family? Help us, God, in our families to be more like you. Unite us, pull us together. Help us, Lord, to be more like you. Help us not to forget the blessings of being your bride.
I've heard people talk about when they first get married, my mom and dad's a perfect example. When they come out of the, from getting married that day, they had $8 to their name. 69 years, God blessed them. All the things they accumulated over that time. When, when the Lord took you, the day you got saved, look at your life. I mean nothing. Randy got married twice in prison. Once in a little eight by ten sale to the man that presented himself that hung on the cross. He told him, if you'll take me, here I am. Jesus said, I will. And then before he ever got out, him and Red got married in prison. How about that? We was all in prison when we got married to Jesus. Thank God. Look at the things, spiritually speaking, or even in your life that you've accumulated since you've been saved. He's been good to us, ain't he? Thank you for being here. Hope you received something from the Scripture tonight. Let's don't forget him. Thus, don't forget our freedom. You need to set a memorial day in your life to remember Jesus. Amen. All right. Do we pray for the services this weekend? Pray that God moves.